Alrighty then, it's uh, classroom time. I took the time to draw all this up. Once again, uh, there is a lighting problem. I hope you catch that top part. One of my six foot lights here blown above so the, the eight footer is taking dominance. I will have that fixed this weekend. I'm putting a new eight footer here. Maybe even another one back here because I'm needing reflectivity onto the seats. Please excuse that if you can't read it. All right, let's go over this now and see what we got. All right, what I've drawn here is two valve diameter pockets. Both of them are 1 600 on the outside. But what I've showed here is this is the modified one I just did. This is the one that stopped. Now remember, with the stop one, okay, what we've got would be, let's look at it this way, 1.500, we're going to put what if, I remember that skit from Saturday Night Live, it's always in my head when I do that, I don't know if y'all remember, what if Caesar had a Piper Cub, and it showed Caesar flying above, pointing at Brutus with John Bellucci, but anyway, they had that what if, what if, that was 1500. Now, let's look at some differences here. This stock one, as you remember, had a 1300 window of actual openness. All right? With a 150, the what if, with a 150, if you've done the math from the open window to the valve seat, turning point, which actually ain't 160, it's a little smaller. We're talking outside diameter of valve, so we clarify that. What you would have is uh, 300 uh, to turn. I call it to turn. I want to get a nail and put that down. Okay? Now, it's radius. That's 70 degree valve angle. All right? With a big long radius for it to turn and go around, the two damaging things here is, of course, cross-sectional area and the whole area where the exhaust gases are going in. Uh, that alone hurts us pretty bad. But remember that when you go, when you start talking valve diameter and radius is to turn, that radius can control whether it's a high lift or a low lift. This much I know for sure that I can tell you confidently. If the longer the radius, let's say that 70 degree width was 250 thousandths compared to 100 thousandths right here. Low RPM or low lift flow, yes, it would do a little bit more kicking the gases out, but once you get up to high lift flow, it becomes a problem. That big long 300 thousandths to turn is going to hamper your flow. So, if you had a bench and you floated, this is what you would see. If you had a 1500 valve cutting this 300 down to 200, your mid lift numbers and upper lift numbers would produce more airflow. All right, with 300 to turn. Now, if we take that 1600, and what if we was at 1500, then we would change that number to 200. Okay? That would be closer to what we would want. So a 150 valve in that head with that stock thing that we seen and a little bit of port work that was done to it would flow more air and make more horsepower. So let's go over here, boom, to the 160. With a 160, what we want is under 200 thousandths. This is our new number right here. I'm going to show you in a minute. I measured it. And cutting all that out to that line that I scribed give us a 1.420 inside diameter of that hole. That is, is a great thing. It's 125 thousandths bigger, or what is that, an eighth of an inch? More area for it to turn through. But this, like I said, this ain't just the kit. Look what our number to turn is. Under 200 at .180. So we're going to have more of the radius we need. We're not going to lose hardly anything on the low lift flow because it was just too long to begin with. But we're going to gain big numbers in mid and upper by getting rid of that. 
So now we got 180 to turn versus 300 to turn. A 1420 versus a 1300. So now we actually can use that 1600. Now I know what you say. What if you had a 150 with a 1420? I don't think you'd want to achieve that because that would mean you'd have to chop all the radius out and there would be no 70 or 60 degree seat or cut. It would just be coming out of the port until 45 and that's no good. Uh, Smokey Unix said it best. The reason you want valve angles is to slow down the airflow rate. You, uh, we'll get into that another time, but uh, versus a totally smooth versus angles, the angles act like a um, they act like a stop in the middle of the road. You know, you drive through the apartment complexes and they got the little speed bumps and everything. That's a control to slow you down. That's what's going on with valve angles somewhat, to put it simply. The angles act like a, a brake to start slowing it down to make the turn. So, we don't ever want to not have three angles. Really, I've played with four. I've gotten some good luck with four angles in the bowl. So that's what we got now. That's what we had. Now I'm going to give you a close-up shot and let you see the inside of it. And I mean, damn, man, it's just night and day difference in there. Now we're going to actually use the 1600 valve. We're going to reap the benefit out of it. But I just want to go over and show you the amount to turn, which would be 300 thousandths versus 180. The 1420 window versus a 1300, and that's how the head was set up. Now, most of the time, these shops, that's what they're going to give you. They're just going to do it because of the time it takes to go in there and do it. But now there is a tool. It's not really that expensive. I, you know, I'm getting a whole set of the whole set's around eight or nine hundred dollars called bow hogs. Now, what the bow hogs do is it's a fixed cutter. They offer it at a 60. A 70, a 75, and a 78 angle, and what it is, it hooks into the head shop, and it goes in there and cuts all that bow out for you. Then you can go in there with your inserting machine or your VG sunning and take your seats and put them in there and roll it into that angle. That's an awesome machine, but it's dangerous because it cuts it so precise that it will actually cut into the casting. So it's going to take time for you to figure out what angle 78 75 what can you get away with because i can't tell you how many cylinder heads have come through my hands where shops have bow hogged them and busted through right into the water jacket all right so anyway that's what we're looking at what if the 500 would have been better with the way it was but the 1 600 i had to go in here chop that out come up with a 1 420 window giving me 180 to turn Phew. All right, let's try to focus and see what we got here on our ports now. Okay. First thing I'm going to do, let's go ahead and zoom in. All right, that's about where we want to be right there. Okay, you can visually see, look how much smaller this is than our big giant open bowl, all right? I mean, just visually... Let me get it set exactly right, boy. It's so sensitive. Okay, look at the difference right there. I mean, that's just night and day. And I know you can see it on your YouTube thing. Now, I'm going to close this all the way and go in here. Now, look at our point that I'm measuring. Okay, number one, this is at 1300. Now it starts to get bigger, see, as it goes up. Remember me telling you I didn't have to go far, it's just how it squeezes it. Now look what happens when we take the 1300 and go here. Wow, look at that. Major difference, okay? Now let's go and set the expansion, uh, or set the expanding snaps. All right, now watch how, look, look how this does this. It's barely a little tug. That's it right there. That's about a half or three, four hundred thousandths down. Now if I loosen it just enough, there we go. Look at there. That's our pull. See, we got a straight back. And I mean, that's a firm little bit of pull right there. Now, 
Look over here. Wow. It won't even come in hardly and touch the seat. Look at that. See, you have to look how far I'm going to have to turn it to get it to fit through. See the difference? This port here is going to really kick ass on the flow numbers now. You wouldn't believe how much difference that just made. All right, so you can just visually see. Now let's do a measurement and see what we got. There's two measurements here that we're talking about. This, this is my measurement I call it a through measurement, which means I can go in here and go up with just a little bit of tug. All right, that measurement... I don't know if I can get you in the viewfinder. Let me see. That's about four, 408, right around in there. Okay, 406. That's our through measurement. Now let's measure it at the given spot, right where the hardened seat is for our max effort. I was coming up with about 1420, 1418. Okay, um, here we go. Let's make sure I got in the viewfinder. Okay, and when I tighten it through, 1426, 1425. Okay, so that's really our measurement right there. It's uh, got a little bit of radius as it comes. It will go through, but for all practical purposes, that is it. Now, here we go. Look, wow. I mean, it's just, I mean, you know, we're talking night and day here. All right, that's what I wanted to show you. Um... It's a little more work for me. Now I gotta go back, pull my valve job equipment out, and do the seat valve job on this and scribe the lines. But it was worth showing this to you. Um, like I said, let me give me one more view in. That's just amazing. Look at the difference from the left to the right. I mean, if we had a 150 valve in there, that would be perfect. Unfortunately, the seat would be up here and the valve would be valve seat would be down in there. But um, if you don't go in there when you put the bigger valves in, this what I'm trying to show y'all, this is what you get. If you're going to put the bigger valves in, you have to go in there, open the throats, roll the radiuses. You just have to do it. If you don't, you're wasting money and you're not doing anything by doing that. So anyway, I got to go in there now, do the valve job on this one. I will go ahead and show you something real quick. Look how I've already got all the lines scribed on the ports. Let me see. I want to get in closer. Pick up point one is going to be this area here, the, the 350 or 400 in. That's pick up one. And then pick up two, of course, the short turn and then the push rod. So I'm going to be working on pick up point one. I'm going to take my uh, snapper and set my measurement for the push through. It goes all the way. I'm going to make sure every single one of these are the same measurement on all the valves. I got to do that in the intake. So let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and pursue this. I'm going to put the camera on and let me show you how close I get them to equal after I do the valve job on this one and straighten it out. Alright, so we're going to stop this episode here and the next episode is going to be pickup point which, which is version 8.0 and in there we'll be concluding the rest of it, touching it up, equalizing them and then we got us ahead.